originally created the Aviator in 2011 using Lightroom and Photoshop for my editing tools. When On1 announced the release of their new Perfect Photo Suite, I was inspired to recreate the Aviator using their newly enhanced standalone program. Now, this one project will cover four areas. Perfect Portrait, which will uh, enhance the model's eyes, lips, and skin. Perfect Layers, which will help us to extract the subject from the background and begin our composite. Perfect Effects to create the actual aviator look. And last will be Perfect Resize to enlarge the image to the final output that we need. So we have a lot to get through. Let's start. This is the final effect we're going to create using Perfect Photos. Let's start from the beginning. From the browser, we're going to select our JPEG image of the aviator. Our first step is going to enhance her eyes, lips, and skin using Perfect Portrait. From here, when the dialog box appears, let's select Edit a Copy. This way, we don't mess with the original image. When Perfect Portrait opens, it's going to analyze the image, select the face, then it's going to mask out the eyes, the lips, and the skin. The green box will signal that it's done. By selecting the face tool, we'll see the selection Perfect Portrait has made. Let's zoom in at 100%. Now, I did a pretty good job outlining the eyes. These little colored pins represent the pupils. So from here, if we select or click and drag on these anchor points, we can shape it just a little bit better. Notice as we're doing the reshaping, Perfect Portrait is already doing its enhancing. We have the eyes set. The lips look pretty good. Bring them up here. Turn this one back out. Now we're going to see how it's auto selected the skin. So coming down here to the, uh, the mask view, anything that's in red represents not skin. Anything that's not red represents skin. For the mode, we're going to select Add Skin. And we're going to uncheck the perfect brush, and we're just going to paint back in some of the areas we want to show the skin. Once we have a general mask, let's come back up and select perfect brush, this time not skin. Let's navigate in again. So the eyes we gotta make, we want to make sure we're not selecting for the skin. So let's just paint back in the eyes. Now using the bracket keys on the keyboard, we'll make the brush bigger or smaller. Good. I'm gonna paint over the eyebrows. And then coming down to the lips. At any point, if we go out of the line, use the keyboard shortcut X to switch the mode or toggle the mode to each setting. In this case here, I want to add to the skin. I'm going to toggle back. See, this up here is not skin. That's the eyelashes. Great. Now let's see our results. So from here, Perfect Portrait enhanced the eyes, the skin, and the lips. And we have the chance right now to tweak those a little bit further. For me, the whites of the eyes are a little too bright, so I'm going to dial it down just a bit. Increase the detail. For the skin, the blemish is a little bit high. Let's add a little texture. Even this looks pretty good. And then for the mouth, it's a little vibrant. 
little more vibrancy into the lips, and a little white back. This looks great. Select Save and Close. Let's redo. Perfect Portrait applies all the changes, and then it's going to bring us back into the browser, where we'll begin the second part. Now, just with a simple few clicks, we were able to enhance eyes, lips, skin in a very, very short time. On to the second part. We're going to use the Power of Perfect Layers to composite our two images. Select the back button, and we're back into the browser. Pressing your shift key down, we'll select the second image, which is the airplane, and we'll select layers. The dialog box appears. Make sure Add as a New Layer is highlighted, and select OK. In a moment, we'll be presented with different layers, and the aviator and the airplane will be on their separate layers. Now, since earlier we enhanced the aviator with the perfect portrait, we have that here as a smart layer. Select the, the aviator, and from the Tools menu, we're going to select Quick Mask. We want to remove the background image to reveal the airplane on the second layer. So anywhere in the white area, just drag and click. In a moment, it'll build a, a perfect mask, and we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. And it's slowly coming into view. We'll do a couple more. And once we have the bulk of it done, then we'll switch over to the brush tool. And that should do it. Great. Now we'll select the masking brush. And here, make sure we select perfect brush. For the mode, we're going to paint out. So we want to get rid of this white. Let's uh, magnify it a little bit more so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to make the brush smaller again by using the keyboard shortcut, the bracket keys. And now I'm just going to paint over the areas I don't want. I'm going to toggle between paint in and paint out. And any of the areas I accidentally went over, we'll make sure that we paint back in. Good. It's looking pretty good. I can change the opacity a bit. And we'll paint out. This will give me a little more control over the background. Zoom out, that's looking good. And let's go back over here to this side. Make sure we're painting out. And let's get the opacity back to 100. Again, I'm just toggling between painting in and painting out of the effect.
Mm -hmm. Couple more spots. In this case here, I can select the uh, perfect brush. Let's just get rid of that one strand. In a short time, we're able to create a complicated mask and extract the subject from the background. Now, our next step is on perfect effects, and this is going to tie in the aviator look. Before we create the aviator look, let's save our perfect layers and file, save. And now we're ready. From here, I'm going to select both images, right mouse click, and create new stamp layer. From here, that new stamp layer that we just created, I'm going to right mouse click on it and convert that to a smart layer. Now we're ready to begin our, our special effects. So click on the effects. Let's recap what we just did. So we merged the two layers together into a stamp layer. So this way, any of the effects that we made on the, the aviator will also be applied to the airplane and vice versa. By converting it to a smart layer, what that's gonna allow us to do is give us an exit strategy. So if at any point we don't like the effects, we can always go back in non-destructively and edit those effects. Now, in a moment when special effects appears, there's going to be a lot of options. My suggestion, spend a day and just have fun. Look at the different filters and look at the different effects that they produce. When you start finding some of the uh, effects work well together, create a preset. And that's what we do with the aviator. Here we go. Now that we're in our perfect effects panel, I'm going to come over to presets. And under my presets, I'm going to select Vanelli and then the Aviator Complete. Now, the only reason why I'm doing this is because in a moment we'll see to create that effect, there's going to be a lot of different filters that, that I used. So, to memorize every one of them, it's going to be extremely difficult. So, here are the different layers of the different filters I've used to create this effect. Notice around her face, her hands, all the other areas, the, the textures are bleeding through. That's because when I created them, I had these uh, mask areas left blank. So I can change that at any moment or at any time. So let's go through individual each one of these. What I'm going to end up doing is just start right from the very beginning. So here's the aviator without any filters applied to it. The first one is dynamic contrast. So if we come over to the filters palette, when I come down dynamic contrast, and the one I chose was surreal. Once surreal appeared, it gives me extra choices that I can change over here. Now notice the preset says custom. That's because I made some changes in these areas here to create the effect that I'm looking for. The next was black and white. We come over here to our tools palette. We'll select black and white. And for this particular one, I just select neutral. Now, what's really neat is they have a little grid button here to where it gives all the effects in one simple plan. So you can just look through and decide which one you like. Once you select it, it'll appear over into your layers palette. Once again, with the black and white filter, we come down, we have extra options that we can apply. Notice the word custom again. This is because I went through and I changed some of the effects to get the look that I'm going for. After black and white, now we started adding texture. So under the texture, Palette, again, let's click on the grid. We're able to look at the different textures and what, what it can do for our image. For this particular one, first one, I chose clean paper because I like the color and like what the texture is doing to the image. 
Now, if we come back over, once again, let's go to the bottom of the screen. And if you notice, it's filter, preset, it's clean paper, and it doesn't say custom, because I didn't make any changes to this. I like it as is. Let's go up. The second texture that I added was a metal. So let's click on textures again. And if we scroll through, we'll look for metal. And here it was rust. Now, rust came in with color. The only change I did was I desaturated it. So if I didn't, this is what it would look like if we left the color in place. So desaturate. Let's click on the, the texture uh, mask and we're gonna paint out the texture in our face. In the tools palette, we'll select our masking brush. We wanna paint out the effect. Feather, let's make that 100. And for the opacity, let's leave it at 100 itself. And I want to come in and just paint out the effect on her face. You know, especially the eyes, you know, the hands. Again, using keyboard shortcut, the bracket keys to make the brushes larger or smaller. Shoulders. Good. And we're almost there. Right. So that rust appears on the outside of the on the outside of the image and on different parts of her, but not on her skin. The next texture that we applied was concrete. So again, we come over here, we look for concrete and apply it. I came down through and I changed the saturation all the way to zero. So no color would bleed through. Now, instead of going back over like we did for the layer mask, I'm going to press the Alt key on the on PC or the Option key on the Mac. As I select the new mask, I'm just going to drag it up to the top and let go of the Alt key or the Option key. And it'll apply that layer mask to the next layer. This will save us a lot of time. Good, I like how that's looking. Now the adjustment brush. The adjustment brush over to the palette again. We'll come over here and we'll select which adjustment brush we want to use. For this area, I chose to use a light brush. And you'll see it down in here. What I want to do is bring a little more light onto her face. So for the opacity, let's bring this down to let's say uh, 20 inch. Increase the brush size. And I just want to slightly paint some light back onto her face. Maybe a little onto her hands. And I like that that's looking. Now, if I apply too much of the brightness, then we can always come back in here, paint in, and let's change that to maybe 10%. And I'll come back through. And I'll take away some of that brightness. Good. Now, another option is I can always come back up here. And under the layer opacity, I can change that. So here it is without the effect. Here it is as I slowly dial in the effect. And 
Learn about we're going up there. That looks good. Now it's time to start adding color. So here's color enhance. And if we go into the tools palette again, come down here for the color enhance, select the grid, and already you can see the one I chose was warm. Come down. And notice the preset is warm again. It doesn't say custom, so that means I left it as is. To change up any of the extra uh, brightness, contrast, or add a little more dark to the color itself. Next part is sharpening. The palette, we come down to sharpen. And let's use the grid view again. From here, I love progressive sharpening, so we use that as is. And then I applied another color. This time, if we come down from color enhance, you'll see I use sky enhance. And now we're going to finish it off with a vignette coming all the way around the image. Over here, we look for the vignette and it was big, soft as the, uh, the preset. By taking your time and trying to experiment with different effects, you'll start to create presets. So, if I use this preset again on the whole series of images we use for the aviator, we'll have a consistent look all the way through. We have the look we're going for. Now, by using Perfect Enhance, we're going to make a few little tweaks to darken the image or to brighten certain spots. So from here, with the aviator selected, select Enhance, and once inside this module, we'll be presented with different things that we could change. For this here, I definitely know I want to increase some of the blacks. That's it bring out the detail more, very similar to sharpening. And then on the bottom, we're going to sharpen for print. And we know it's going to be on a, a glossy portrait. That's looking really good. And from here, we're actually done. To finish our aviator piece, we want to resize the print for the output size that we need. Now, if we did this in the very beginning, if we made it 24, let's say by 36, or 24 by 16, a lot of the filters would take a long time to render. So, we're going to use perfect resize to come up with a 24 by 16 at 180 ppi, or pixels per inch, uh, dimensions. Let's begin. Now that we're done, we're going to flatten the image and then resize it. So if I right mouse click on the top part, if we come down, merge layers. Since we don't need the planet anymore, we'll right mouse click on it and delete. So now we're left just with one layer. From here, click on resize. By changing the height to 16, it automatically changes our width to 24.9. The rest of the settings, we're going to leave the same, and we'll click Apply. Now, if we didn't flatten the image, Perfect Resize would render each layer individually, which could take a long time. So what we're going to do here is save this final, pro save this final print as a different uh, Perfect Layer uh, file. So if we have to go back into the original file and make any of our changes, they're still all there. Now we're back in perfect layers. Let's click on the crop tool and under custom, let's create it for the poster. We want 24 by 16. And we click apply.
I apply the damn thing? Oh, apply. Now we have the perfect dimensions we want. 24 by 16. Now let's keep this at the 180 pixels per inch and click apply. We now have a perfect size to send off to our printer. Our final step will be file, save as. Now let's give this a, a name, aviator underscore print underscore 24 by 16 at 180 ppi and save. We were able to recreate the aviator using on one's perfect photo suite. Now my personal workflow is I use Lightroom to enhance my images, Photoshop to do all my manipulations, and then from there I bring it into on one and do all my tweaks and my changes from there. By doing it this way that I just showed you, if you don't have Photoshop or Lightroom, you can get similar effects just by using the suite.